Okay, uh, I'm not sure how this work because this is second screen. So okay, this is uh, another talk about ESP32. Uh, we already had one around last October where William gave the initial talk about ESP32. Um, this is kind of update, see what happens during the six months. So okay, we know that the ESP32 is actually a uh, upgrading of uh, ESP8266. I see a lot of people actually using this before. And uh, the chip was uh, released on September of 2016, and uh, William did that talk on October, which is very pioneering work. So it has been six months already passed, and there's a lot of updates to uh, ESP32 development environment and uh, everything else. So let's see what happens now. Uh, during that time, actually, many people have difficulties to get a ESP32. So there's uh, this uh, sarcastic Twitter message, you see, it is made of purest uh, unobtainium. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but luckily, uh, recently, uh, there's an announcement saying, okay, we have the new version that's made of Avalium. 1729, I guess it's 2017, February the 9th, there, where they have a uh, big, biggest launch. So now it is actually very easy to get an ESP32. So what we have now is uh, first we have an uh, ESP32 W room. This is the expressive um, official module. Uh, unlike the ESP8266 time, then we have a lot of different modules, uh, ESP01 and ESP14. So at this currently, we only have one, which is the ESP W room 32. And luckily, Expressive is giving all the design document of this module. So you see other people are making similar modules with the same pinout and the same layout, everything. So for example, uh, our familiar AI thinker get one. They, they call this ESP32S. And recently, there's a DF robot. They get another one. It's exactly the same as the ESP32 double room, but they have uh, some of their own logos written under shielding can. And, uh, I have to mention some of the other boards. For example, this is a DV Dev Kit C, which is also initialized by Expressive when they initially launched this module. And uh, that was uh, selling by Adafruit and uh, Olimax <coughs> during starting from last year. And the time was like uh, one customer, one piece kind of uh, limitation. Now it, it doesn't have any more. And uh, some of, I just go through some of the development hardware. Uh, Nano32, which is almost the first ESP32 development board by third party. And this is done by uh, Maker Asia and the Gravitec. Uh, it's a much nicer design. I still love it very much because it is fit to a uh, breadboard very well. Whereas the, this board, you have to use two breadboards side by side. Then you can actually spend two boards to use it. So the first big name who give a uh, ESP32 board was Sparkfront. They have this. Uh, ESP32 thing. Uh, in addition to any of the other board, they have a lithium battery charger, and uh, they have so that you can you can use a lithium battery to supply this whole uh, project. And also, there are some of the other name was mentioning. For example, the home build, they are doing a cloud supply now. The, uh, this board is selling at twelve dollars. And uh, okay, this one, uh, WeMosk, is kind of a very familiar name in 8266. And they, they really give a very attractive price at $7. You can order this from uh, AliExpress. I'm not sure how the quality yet, but I didn't order, but $7. How can go wrong, right? <laughs> 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 and uh, this is another one from Thailand, and they have. Uh, they, they have uh, additional. They have humidity sensor on top on top of the board, and humidity and temperature. I'm not sure whether it is a good idea because the temperature sensor seems like very near the ESP32 module. So yeah, it, it runs quite warm actually. And uh, okay, I I need to mention this is my board. <laughs> uh, this is JS ESP32. Uh, it has all the functions of both all these, and uh, I have a special uh, shell that has a JTAG debugger on it. So if I have time, maybe I have to uh, quick demo of this later. So OK, uh, this is the hardware side. So let's go to the, the major difference between 32 and the 8266 is that ESP32 has a hell of a lot of documentation. I don't want to pull up this page yet. It's too many things here. And they actually have a very nice uh, reader.io. They have all their documentation online that you can just search, index, whatever, inside there. And with this documentation, I have to say that 
now Expressive is very much on par with all the other responsive silicon manufacturers because they have all the documentation and they keep updating it very nicely then. And also you can have this, uh, this book, this is, uh, this is actually a free book, but uh, it recommend, recommended the price is $5, you can pay this guy, Nick Coben, $5 and get this <coughs> book. And he also have a very nice uh, YouTube channel about all the technical tu tutorials. So the main idea I'm coming into th this talk is I want to introduce different development environments. I want to do some demos. So let's start with the first one, which is MicroPython. Our MicroPython have been very, very popular in the last year when they do ESP8266, CC3000, all kinds of uh, boards. And uh, uh, this guy, it, it is MIT licensed, meaning that you can use it for commercial projects. And uh, it, it is actually a single-handedly ported to ESP32 by this guy, Damien George. And uh, now, uh, recently, they have an uh, announcement that the, uh, the in initial MicroPython, which is by PyCon team, and they are merging together. So uh, the current GitHub repo is here, but soon you will see the whole thing in a single repo by PyCon. So I, I, I'm doing a quick demo here. So I have this board here. Uh, I'm not sure where you can see. Uh, I just put an LED. Uh, everything I want to do, starting doing anything, is a uh, blinking program. So let's see uh, how I do a, how we can do a blinky using a MicroPython. Do you need to hold the board for you? I don't need. <laughs> Actually, I think I think most of people can see this. Okay, I need to pull the screen. Oh, okay. MicroPython are currently, uh, what you, you have is they call a repo, which is read evaluation print loop. It's a very, very fancy name, but actually what it does is just a command line. So you, you can do everything like you do in Python, like print, hello. Oh. It's, it's, it's very much the Python program. Now you can do all kinds of things here. For example, I can do a very simple blinking program. Where's my mouse? Okay. Okay, this is a very simple Python program. If if anybody uh, familiar with the Python, this is that it just it's starting to blink. So this is MicroPython. Uh, actually, if you use MicroPython on A2266, there's a very nice uh, web UI. Everything that you can actually type the code and store in the I in the microcontroller itself. But currently, they it has not been ported yet. But it will be very soon. So so this is uh, but. It is kind of a very promising project, but I just stop here as I want to go to the next one, which is much more interesting. So the second one, what, what I'm showing is okay. I want to show that it's something called a Mangoose OS. It is kind of very, very new. Uh, it's just started, and uh, what it does is it allows you to program a ESP8232 uh, using JavaScript. So I do the same thing. I put the board here. And what I'm doing here is, let's see, um, for a uh, you can go to the website and download the Mangoose OS, and what you get is actually a very simple tool um, called MOS. You will just get something like a executable just called MOS. It doesn't show up anything, but when you run it, I, I show a Mangos OS um, program first. Okay. I need to stop this. Let me just stop this first. So basically, Mangoose OS let you to program a uh, microcontroller using both 
JavaScript and uh, C. So for example, here is a C program and the JavaScript pro program work together to make a Blinky. So what does the C program do? It's actually very simple. It's just, uh, it just one function. Uh, give a number, return a number, tell that the LED is on pin 5. And this is the initial, uh, initial code that looks very daunting, but actually it's just uh, starting the JavaScript and uh, run this init.js. And what happens to the JavaScript side is, OK, this is pure JavaScript. Get the LED from C function call and do a timer and do a callback to toggle this thing, to toggle the LED. So how to use this one is open. OK, actually, what you need to do is uh, Actually, what you need to do is just call MOS build. Uh, I'm not doing it here because the, 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 the mechanism is it upload all your code to their cloud server to do the compilation, then they download. After downloading, then you just do a flash. And we automatically probe where is your uh, board, which com port it is, and yeah, upload everything onto the board. It's not to blink. It's, it's like that simple. And uh, and the most interesting part is that you can run Mango's OS without without any parameter. Then you get a nice web UI. It's very hard to move to a second. You get a very nice web UI, and. Uh, you can see what are the files installed in the microcontroller, especially just now the init.js is here. We can just change, I see, save and reboot. You can start to see the, the LED blinking faster. So it's basically, if you, you upload one time, then you can do all your program inside this environment without any additional um, development environment. So that is Mango's OS. And they have a lot of other uh, uh, APIs. They call it RPC API. That uh, this all the like I square C, GPIO, file system, all the Wi-Fi stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you can call these APIs using either JavaScript or C or a web service call or a REST for API. Everything. It's so it's kind of when I saw this, oh, oh my god! I never tried this before. It's kind of uh, I just know this last week, and I feel that that could be a future. OK, so, so, so much for this. The, I want to do a quick demo. There's too, not too much time left. Uh, everybody's favorite Arduino has been ported to ESP32 as well. And this is usable because Arduino Core, which is GPL licensed, and the, the two person who is heavily contributed to Arduino project actually is uh, Mino Dev, he is the initial Arduino also of uh, ESP31, which is the beta version of ESP32. And the, the, this IGRR is uh, Ivan, who, who is the initial author of uh, Arduino Core for A266. And both of them are working for Expressive now, so uh, this is kind of official uh, port. Uh, I, uh, you can actually go to the Arduino Core GitHub repo and pull out the whole thing. And they don't have. Uh, Automatic installation, like uh, previously we have in uh, um, A266, but it's quite similar. You just you just install this one, I install the whole core. Yeah. So it's basically you 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 have very much the same same thing as the. Okay. So you choose your board. You choose your board as ESP32 module, like. They have a lot of choices, same as 8266. I can get this module, and you just uh, you just upload your code. Uh, if you are familiar with Arduino, this is super simple. It's like digital write, uh, delay something out of like that. So it just works like uh, you are using an uh, official Arduino board. OK, so I have 23 seconds left. So let's go to the last one. If you are not happy with all kinds of high-level program, everything, 
and uh, in the end, you can still go back to the original uh, ESP IDF, which uh, William gave a talk last time. And what I'm showing is the progress of making this one. What you need to do is uh, download the ESP IDF packages and the let me see here. Uh, oh. Where's my, I, I should off this one. This is still a blinking program. Uh, everything you need to do is like a mm, anybody who did the Linux kernel configuration, actually you see this one. This is the same configuration part as uh, ESP IDF. We do everything here, like you, you, you could configure which, uh, where's the COM port, everything. Then you do. Exit. You do a uh, make, make, and uh, make flash. Then it's a very menu. So, but it this gives you total control of everything about this uh, ESP32. Let's see here. So it's a it's a basic code that while while loop set level high, set level low, let let let, let the uh, LED blink. And it is very uh, nicely integrated into Eclipse. Then there's a documentation of about how to set up in your Eclipse and with all the code uh, sense and, and look for the, all the documentation, uh, all the header files within the IDE. And uh, once you have all everything compiled, um, I do a very quick demo of. I do a very quick demo of uh, JTAG debugging. So here I start a JTAG server. The program is already running. So for example, I can set a waypoint here. So it's kind of kind of it stop at your breakpoint. And you can step into the code. Uh, you can see all the variables. Everything. This is never been possible in 8266. Now it is possible. So you can dig into everything. You want to do a real serious debugging, then you can use the ESP32 with a JTAG. So this is all about I can share at this time. So I think that's that, that's all for it. Any question? Correct. Uh, actually, what happens is you need a JTAG, which uses some of the GPIO pins, uh, unfortunately. Then you need an uh, open OCD as a JTAG server. And uh, on the other hand, you have a GDB to connect to the OT open OCD to doing the debugging. Sorry? Okay, uh, there's, a, there's a JTAG debugging uh, uh, kind of documentation in the Express website, which is not very details, uh, detailed. And uh, uh, if you continue to look and monitor this space, especially Facebook, I'm preparing the website talking all about debugging. So it will be launching like, uh, within two weeks' time. Ifsa Pao will uh, still be here, so have a chat with him. And uh, we it, can it, show you, you can come and uh, here and uh, yeah. we, we can talk about this board. Yeah. All right, so thank you, Baoshi. Thank you so much.